What's going on, folks? So, it's New Gun Tuesday. Actually, every day is a good day for a new gun, if you ask me. Uh, but today, we're joined by Cy and Lauren Hudson, who are going to show us the Hudson H9. What's going on, man? Down here near Austin, we got whooped. So she, wow. she said if she couldn't use her voice, she wasn't going to get on and whisper. Got Sorry. You. I mean, I, I, I guess we can we can stand looking at your face for this entire interview. That's fine. I apologize to everyone who came specifically to look at Lauren's face. Right? <laughs> so, man, it's, uh, it's it's been a second since I since, since I've seen you at uh, Shot Show. Uh, it's been nonstop since then. How, yeah. how you been? <laughs> I can I can only imagine, man. I can only imagine. So let's let's jump right into it, man. Uh, let, let, tell, tell the tell the world about the Hudson Nine, the H Nine. <laughs> Well, for everybody, um, I will say the funniest thing that happened to me at SHOT Show, uh, I started going to the spiel, started giving the, and someone said, shut up, I've already heard you do this twice on YouTube. So for everyone, deal with me uh, really quick. I pulled one of them right off the uh, prototype line. So you can see it's a prototype magazine with the cutout. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can remember exactly how I said it before. Get it really good in the camera. So the Hudson H9, our flagship model, is the uh, is a nine millimeter double stack, 15 plus one striker fired pistol with a 1911 style trigger. What we mean by 1911 style, and this is for all the people who respect John Moses Browning the way I do, is that the rotation is isolated in the sear mechanism. Hmm. So the rotation of the trigger is all isolated back here, as opposed to most, you know pick a pistol nowadays, everybody's more of a high power style, at least, you know, for the one that in my mind uh, made it even more popular, but I guess revolver style, you know, yeah, where it rotates up front. Kind of and, swing lever, uh, as I'll call it. <laughs> it's, it's easy. It's, it's easy to engineer. And that's why a lot of guys uh, have gone to it, especially whenever you're integrating a drop safety. That was, that was a design challenge. This does have a drop safety, like, you know, most striker fired guns, mm -hmm. but, uh, the engineering that went into that short travel with a with a reliable drop safety that took some time. Um, it is actually thinner and more compact than uh, most people look with uh, the weight up front and the tall back. A lot of people think it's rather large, but the size is right between the Glock 19 and 17, and we're actually thinner at the slide. We're actually one inch side to side, I believe the Glock's like 1.18. Yeah. And we're 0 0.06 inches wider at the grip panels, not at the grip itself. So it is rather, rather oh, yeah, slim. That's pretty slim. Like, now, was, it, was the Glock, was, was, was the Glock kind of the benchmark in terms of when, when you guys were designing the gun, was it, was it the gun that was like, okay, we're going to take certain, was there certain guns that you guys were looking at and then trying to yeah. kind of elevate past that point? Or was it kind of like, we, we're not even going to factor in those guns and we're just going to build whatever we think is the greatest thing ever? Oh, no, absolutely not. Uh, we, we really care what people want. The Glock was absolutely one we looked at. We measured. Um, the reason I can pull those those uh, widths right out of my head is we considered that very heavily because gotcha. people, uh, for a double stack gun, the, the fact that so many people can still carry a Glock 19 is impressive. Yeah. Um, it's very impressive. Um, so that would definitely uh, led into a lot of the design choices. But uh, what most people, and I haven't even addressed yet, most people want to know why this big... Yeah, the, piece up the, the big la the laser blaster piece, right? <laughs> there you go. The Judge Dread, the Robocop. Um, form did follow function, where most pistols, what they wanted to do, and I keep on rotating it the wrong way. Most pistols, whenever they raise the hand, they start introducing rotation mm -hmm. right into uh, how you hold your gun. Like any time, you know, at the strike one pistol, really low bore axis, your hand gets up in there. Um, we didn't want to introduce any off axis rotation. The great thing about a 19 style trigger, and I am clear, is that it's moving straight forward and back. There's no movement to the sight except straight forward and back. And that's that rotational trigger gets out of the way. Well, we didn't want to introduce any off-axis grip angle either as well. So you're aiming right in, straight right here. So instead of bringing the hand up, we brought the slide down right on top of the trigger guard. So that meant we couldn't use a Browning linked or linkless cam system. The cam system moved forward down onto the slide and this one had to sit down here and that was some fun engineering and then we had to leave that big and beefy for structural integrity and then a full-size recoil spring right below it that's that's what that is we left enough room for no binding um, 
Uh, what actually, you know, we've had some really perceptive guys on the forums be like, what about carrier tilt? And they're actually, you know, like, yeah. yeah, we had to leave enough room to account for that so that whenever we have our wear surfaces and everything, there's enough give there to where we're not just introducing an inherent problem. So a lot of guys have, have worried about that, and that was a lot of fun testing. Oh, it was exciting. The other, the other thing I've heard people worry about, well, I'll go in more to the features of the pistol. We do have a 4.8-inch barrel, and the benchmark for that was uh, 1911, but also that it had been proven as a duty carry length for the M&P and also for competition. That's what I was going to ask you, too. So, was it, so with the H9, was it geared towards concealed carry was it designed to be kind of an, a, a versatile all-around gun or was there a specific sp specific segment of, of, of the gun world where you guys were trying to really kind of fit the h9 into we we wanted to appeal to a very broad if uh if initially hesitant market there was no guarantee that the industry would respond like they did at at shot show and yeah. thank y'all for everyone who made that awesome um but we wanted to steal points here and there um, the guys who uh, want to run for a competition and like a steel gun, uh, for the traditionalist 1911 guys who carry 43 ounce guns regularly, or the guy who the only reason he doesn't carry a steel gun is because they don't make a polymer. Um, they only make polymers in this type of style of strike fire gun. So we're we're a new company. We had to create our own segment because if if we had not, we would we'd be considered a me too gun. Gotcha. And and I, so I, th it, I think I think you guys definitely got away from 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 that as far as possible. <laughs> definitely is not you. a Me Too gun. I'll give you that much. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> it took some effort. Now, I know people are worried about the the light, the weapon mounted light. Yeah, guys. I was going to ask you that next. Next, it's a it's a huge huge culture within um, within the firearms industry. We did have a rail here. I will say that we are working on an adapter uh, for a light that everybody. And we worked with the company. They were very helpful, and we're going to sell an adapter. That way, the guys who have already bought three hundred to four hundred dollar lights can just buy a cheaper adapter to throw the rail on there. The TTPs of handling the light are going to be more similar to the ALG six second mount. Yeah. Or like the old Mark Twenty Three Lamb TTPs. You know, I know you've reviewed Mark Twenty Three. Yeah, I sure did. That's what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but those, I mean, it's going to look different. It's going to have to look different. Um, but the TTPs, the guys who use those two systems, the six second mount and the Mark 23, those are guys who heavily rely on their pistols. So I'm not too worried about the, it being a reliable method of light manipulation. Gotcha. Now, as far as material of the gun, is, so is, is any of that gun polymer or is it, just, or is it all metal? Uh, steel. Uh, okay. it's a steel frame insert, steel on the, on the grip. Um, and like, it's a, like the three, SIG 320, it's a chassis system. Steel on the slide, steel on the barrel. It's actually a steel upper back strap and G10 on the lower back strap. That's the one thing we did carve a little weight, but it actually makes it a lot nicer sure. because the machine on G10 for that uh -huh. serrate. Did you, did you ever have any intentions of, of leaving, I'm going to say leaving, but putting a grip, uh, kind of the, the grip safety on the back of the gun, considering you know it kind of did borrow so heavily from the 1911 platform? Was that ever a consideration? Mm -hmm. No, uh, no. We had a we had a profile early on that looked like we had one, uh -huh. but the we went away from that simply because we we it's a smaller community that really prefers that. We did do the integral trigger safety because so many people know and love that and trust it on even rifles nowadays. Yeah, and, and we left the consideration. These are end caps, so you can put left, right, or AMB safeties on it. We'll be selling that as a kit afterwards. Okay. So. Um, but then along with that, we have the drop safety in there. So that's that's one of the big differences in there is our, our drop safety is more has a has a heavy SIG or uh, heritage, like with the old guns breaking apart, that really sharp little uh, yeah. piece going up there and hitting on it. So Awesome. Now, um, w w when can we be expecting these to be available for purchase? Because um, I haven't shot one, nor have I held one. I've only seen one. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how soon I can get one in hand. You, you know you're on the list. I mean, we've okay. already had this I mean, I was, I was acting like I was asking for the broad majority. I really wasn't. I was just trying to see how fast I can get one in my hands. I'm sorry, guys. I love you, but sometimes the guns went out. <laughs> um, well, we're hoping, um, actually, we're planning on making the announcement for a, a projected ship date at the NRA show. We did okay. get our booth uh, two weeks ago. Um, we are not trying to torture people, but um, I brought I brought a prototype magazine. Actually, this is not, sorry. This is a prototype magazine. Uh -huh. 
This is our first article verification and inspection magazine. So it won't come, it'll come coded, it'll come black. But uh, this is what we are currently doing all day, every day, besides redlining documents with distributors and, and uh, meeting with people. Awesome. Is we received, we received this, we have to load it up, we have to, uh, I don't know, there's a bunch of different things that they use to inspect them, everything from gauges and calipers, like all the nerds that they are. Much respect to all nerds. And, uh, but also like a Keyence, uh system, which is a computer system, they throw it on there, they put in the digital, and we have to measure it. And then we have to function check it. Because even if it measures correctly, it doesn't mean that yeah, it functions right. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited to say that it snaps right in there. So <laughs> this one, uh, this, this is one of the pieces that we've come through and we've said, all right, we're pretty, pretty, uh, pretty close there. Um, but you have to have 100% of the parts to make the gun. And if they're not up to spec, we're going to have to send them back. So gotcha. we've already put the money down for tooling. And for everyone who's in the firearms industry, whenever you, this is an original tool, this is an original part. So uh, don't worry, guys. We're going to be shipping guns because we're already, we're already on the hook financially. Gotcha. We've already put a lot, of time, <laughs> a lot of time and money into that. That's a hell of a motivator, I tell you that much. So. <laughs> Every no, but, but man, I really appreciate it. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to uh, getting my hands on a H9, especially considering it isn't one of the Me Too guns. So I'm actually a lot more excited than tip, than tip than usual, so to speak. Um, well, I remember, but, um, uh, well, I forgot which interview or which review you did where you were talking about the packaging and overall uh, for the packaging, yeah. it's going to have more of a leather look to it, more of like a watch case. Yeah, you know? I'm all for that. I am yeah. all for that. I can tell you that much. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, but no, but thank you very much, Simon. I, I, I'm really looking forward to it. And thanks for speaking with us. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate uh, it. Absolutely, man. Thanks. When we come back, Breitbart's Second Amendment writer, Dr. AWR Hawkins. I love saying AWR. It's funny. He'll be joining us.